In today's video, I'll teach you all the basics of Premiere Pro in just a few minutes. Alright, so to start, let's create a new project by clicking this new project button, then just give it a name, choose where you want to save it, and make sure the skip import mode box is checked. Once we're inside Premiere Pro, let's head up to workspaces and make sure the editing workspace is selected. We can actually customize this a bit more by dragging panels around or closing the ones we don't need. I'll quickly set mine up the way I like it. And just so you know, if things ever get messy later, we can always reset the layout back to the default right here. And if you're missing a panel, just go to window and enable whatever is missing from the list. Next, we need to bring in our files. To import video, audio or any other assets, we can either click this blue import media button or simply drag the file straight into the project panel. And once we brought everything in, it's a good idea to stay organized. So I would recommend creating new bins or in other words folders to keep things neat and easy to find, especially if we're working with a lot of clips. Now that our files are ready, we need to create a sequence. Think of it as the space where we'll arrange our clips and do all the editing. To make one, just drag our main footage onto the timeline and Premiere Pro will automatically create a sequence based on that clip's settings. You'll also see a sequence file show up in the project panel. If we want to change anything about the sequence, like the resolution or frame rate, we can go to sequence, sequence settings and adjust things here. And before we move on, I'll drop in the other two imported files onto the timeline as well. Now let's get familiar with moving around the timeline. To scroll through, just click and drag the bar above it. We can then press the spacebar to play and press it again to pause. If we want to zoom in or out for more detail, we can hold Option on Mac or Alt on Windows and scroll the mouse wheel over the area we want to focus on. And if you're not using a mouse, then no worries, the plus and minus keys works too. Let's go over the most important tools now, starting with the selection tool. We can activate it here or just press V on the keyboard. With this tool, we can move clips around or adjust their length by dragging the edges. It's kind of the default tool, so if something ever feels off or we can't click on anything, double check that the selection tool is active. And also, make sure snap is turned on as well. That way, clips will align automatically when we move them close together, which really helps. Next up is the track select tool. The shortcut is A to select everything forward and Shift plus A to select everything backward. I personally use this one all the time. So for example, if we press A and then left click at the beginning of our timeline, it selects everything in front. Then we press V to switch back to the selection tool and we can move that whole group somewhere else. Same thing with Shift plus A, that selects everything behind our cursor. Now if we want to speed up or slow down a clip, we can use the rate stretch tool. The shortcut is R. Once it's enabled, just grab the edge of the clip and stretch it forward to slow it down or make it shorter to speed it up. Alternatively, we can select the clip and press Command plus R on Mac or Control plus R on Windows to bring up speed settings. From here, we can manually adjust the speed or even reverse it depending on what you're going for. And if our slow motion looks a bit choppy, try enabling optical flow. It smooths things out quite nicely. To cut clips, we'll use the razor tool. The shortcut for it is C. Let's make a few cuts here, then switch back to the selection tool, select the part we want to remove and hit backspace to delete it. If we want to close the gap, we can just drag the clips together with the selection tool or click the empty space and press backspace again. This method works really well when we are just starting out, but if you want to speed things up, I've got a short tutorial covering some more efficient techniques. Now let's add some text. 
click the type tool icon or press T on your keyboard, then click anywhere in the video preview and start typing. Premiere will automatically create a text layer for us. Once we're done typing, switch back to the selection tool. And then if we hold command on Mac or control on Windows, we can snap the text to the center or position it wherever we want. To customize the text, make sure the layer is selected and then go to the effect controls panel and expand the text section. Or even better, try the new properties tab, which is cleaner and easier to use. Just play around with the settings and see what looks good to you. Now let's add a simple transition, like a fade in, fade out or a cross dissolve between clips. To do that, select the edge of the clip where we want it to happen and then press Shift plus D to apply the default transition. We can also adjust how long it lasts by dragging its edge. But if you want some more options, head to the effects panel and open the video transitions folder. From there, we can drag a different animation on top or right click one and set it as our new default. While we're still in the effects panel, we'll also find the video effects folder. Let's try the Lumetri color effect found under the color correction subfolder. Simply drag it onto the clip, then go to effect controls, open up basic correction and tweak things like contrast or exposure until it looks the way you want. There are a lot more effects in here, but you don't need to worry about them right now. That said, if you are curious and want to achieve some amazing results without doing much manually, I've linked some free presets in the description. Alright, now let's try to make a basic animation, like a simple zoom in and out. First, click on the clip we want to animate, then go to the effect controls panel and move the playhead to the point where we want the animation to start. At that spot, toggle the position and scale stopwatches to set our first keyframes. Then move forward a bit in the timeline and increase the scale to zoom in. And then we can also adjust position if we want to focus on a specific part of the video. Premiere will automatically create a new set of keyframes for those changes. After that, move forward again and add another set of keyframes to hold that zoom for a moment. And finally, go forward one more time and reset both scale and position back to how they were at the beginning. That creates the zoom out. And just like that, we've got a basic zoom in and zoom out animation. If you want to make these kinds of zooms look smoother, I've got two more quick tutorials that explain it in more detail. Now let's look at audio. If we want to balance the volume of our audio, the easiest way is by using the essential sound panel, which is already part of my workspace here. But if you don't see it, you can enable it by going to window and then clicking on the essential sound. Once it's open, just select your audio clip and then click auto match. Premiere will automatically understand what kind of audio it is and adjust the levels. And if we still need to tweak the volume after that, we can adjust it using the clip volume slider. Alternatively, we can also select the audio clip and press G on our keyboard. Then just make sure adjust gain by is selected and enter how many decibels we want to increase or decrease. Now to add fades, it works the same way as with video. Just click the edge of the audio clip and press Shift plus D to apply a default fade. Or we can also drag this little handle right here. Lastly, if our video has audio that we don't need, we can right click the clip, choose unlink and then delete the audio track with backspace. Once we are done editing, it's time to export our project. We can export the whole thing or just a section by marking in and out points using the I and O keys. After that, go to the export tab, set the range to source in and out give the file a name and location and select H264. Then make sure match source adaptive high bitrate is selected. These settings work really well for YouTube and most basic projects. But if the file size is too large or the export takes too long, we can lower the bitrate here. If you want to learn more about export settings, there is a full tutorial linked in the description. And that's it. Not too bad, right? But if anything still feels confusing, don't worry, I've got two more super helpful tutorials on the screen right now. Alright, I'll see you in the next one.